Okay, so in this chapter we will go over line modeling. Now I will divide this chapter up in a few things. One is just how to use the line, the lines. So we call them lines in Trees Max, but they are splines. Another one is how to use the extrude modifier on it, how to use the sweep modifier on it, how to use the lattice and other modifiers on it. And um, yeah, actually basically just like a bunch of extra small stuff. But those are the main ones. So if you go to your create menu and you go to the second bar over here. Now, as I've said like in the beginning when we went over primitives, I use line modeling a lot. And I will show you why. Now back then I went already over like these things, but um, I will just go over the line this time because these ones are all variations of the line. What is, <laughs> what is the line? Uh, if I go for example to my front view, line modeling inside of 3ds Max is very powerful because you simply want to select the line, click, and then you can draw out a spline. Now if you hold shift, this spline will snap based upon um, just 90 degrees. So I can snap this any way I want. Now let's say that, okay, so I've done this and I want to like create a bevel. I just move it like this, I hold shift and shift will just make it nice and straight. Now let's say like, okay, so we're making like some kind of a profile. What I can also do is I can also click and drag and that will basically give me a smooth line. And then you can just like continue this. So yeah, you can imagine that you can create very complicated profiles with this. Now, of course, this is just like, <laughs> this is just a silly looking profile, but um, it's just to give you an idea. Now, once you've done that, you will hear, you will have a line modifier. A line modifier is pretty much the same as when you right click, convert to, and it's an editable spline modifier. See, it's just, uh, that's just what it is. Now what you can do is if you press one, you have almost the same as vertex mode. And this is handy if you like want to after the fact, like, okay, I want to move this around. Or like, okay, I want to make this rounder. I can click on this. And what you will have is you will have these two bars over here. If you go to scale, you can scale these bars. However, they will always scale at the same time. But if you right click, you can go here and you can set it from a bezier, which is the two lines, to a bezier corner. A bezier corner basically means that you can move and rotate them per um, bar over here. Now, this is sometimes a little bit limiting, but uh, as you can see here, I can now just, I can now, here see, I can now um, rotate this any way I want separately from each other next to this we also have our bezier which will turn it back into like that they all correspond with each other we have a corner which will basically get rid of all of those smoothings and we have smooth and smooth will just um give you like a very smooth curve but it will give you no control at all over it so that is what uh how you switch between the different modes over here and basically next to this there's like a few more settings that i want to go over so let's say that you have these corners and let's say you want to add a bevel to this, a chamfer. You can go down here and you can simply select chamfer and then click and drag. And here you can very easily add the chamfer. Now these lines are a little bit more prone to breaking as in remember how I said with the reset X form that sometimes your bevel doesn't come out correctly. Now, unfortunately, on a line, it's very annoying to, uh, to use reset X form. You can do it, but I would not recommend it because 9 out of 10 times it breaks it. So then I would just simply go in and I would then just like move this around. Now, when we chamfer this, this will become a bezier. So if I want to move this around, I can simply right click and set this to a corner. And then here, if I set these both to corners, now I can just move them around any way I want. Another one that I like to use is the fillet. The fillet is basically like a chamfer, but it is round. So it will allow me to add like a nice round corner wherever I want. Also in like these pieces, see? Yeah, I can just very easily make this nice and round. Uh, we have an insert. An insert is just like it says, you can click wherever you left off and you can continue on your graph in any way that you want. As you can see over here. So I can very simply insert and I can just add extra pieces. Uh, you also have a connect. And I believe that a connect um, allows you to connect like two pieces. But yeah, it would need to be like, they would need to be um, 
the endings. So they, they are handy for like the endings. If you for example want to weld, let's say that we have two pieces close together and I want to turn them into one, I tend to first press um, fuse and what fuse does is they move them on top of each other. They do not weld them, they just move them on top of each other. And if I then press weld, it has now become one singular line. So if I click once, see, it is now one point. So that's a handy way to like quickly collapse something. And you can even attach extra lines. So I can even go in here and I can like uh, select another line, go to this one. And if I simply press attach, I can add this line to this. So we now have these uh, <laughs> interesting looking lines. The next thing that I'm going to show you is a modifier, which is the extrude modifier that I very often use. The extrude modifier you can use to turn this profile into 3D. You simply click on it, and this is why I wish that Maya had, or Maya and Blender had these tools, because I've seen nothing like this. Uh, it's so easy. So I basically go ahead, and in my extrude, I go to my amount, and if I set this down in this case, or you can set this the other way, it doesn't really matter. You can see that it literally just extrudes out a mesh, just like that. Very easy. Now, if you feel like I have too many segments, you can simply go into line, press this little show end result button. And if you then go ahead and scroll down here to the interpolation, this is basically your segments. If you set this lower, you can see over here that it will just lower down your segment amounts. And after this, this is non-destructive. So I can simply go and add and add a poly. And uh, I can, for example, make some changes like this. And then I can still go all the way back to my line and still move this. And as long as I'm not going in this area over here, because this area will, of course, respond to the edit poly, I can still make very easy changes to this however I want. So that is the extrude modifier to this, which is really nice. Now, the next one I'm going to show you is uh, probably my all-time favorite, and it is the sweep modifier. So, what is a sweep modifier? I'm going to show you in a few different ways. First of all, let's say I add a line and this line is going to be like a, like a snake, something like that. So just like a round piece. Let's add a few more interpolation steps. I'm going to create another line, which is going to be like a profile. And I'm just going to make this very easy. There we go. So we have another profile like this. So, uh, yes, okay. What is the sweep modifier? I can even also just do like a single line here. The sweep modifier, if we go down here, it is called sweep, S-W-E-E-P. It allows you to deform shapes based upon your line. When you select this, you will always start with an angle. Now, you have a bunch of stuff here. So you have angle, bar, cylinders. Um, I would say play around with these. I tend to f off or go for the bar or for the cylinder. And when you select that, you can set your length and you can set your width. Now, this will simply follow your line. However, it uh, even if it gives it curves, it will automatically give you uh, enough segments to follow your line around. So like this, you can simply go for bar, like here. Or if I go in here, I can go, okay, sweep modifier. I can go for a cylinder, reduce the radius, boom, I have a cable. Of course, you would then go into like your line and uh, oh no, sorry, you would in this case, you would go into your sweep, go into your interpolation. And this basically will set like the roundness of it. But just like that, you can very quickly, you can imagine how quickly you can create cables and other kinds of random stuff. Now, another one that I wanted to show you, which uh, is also for the sweep, very powerful. Let's say that, okay, I have a building. I want to make a profile around this building. Let's say that it's just going to be like a nice corner like this. What I can do is, is I can simply go in, I can add a sweep modifier, and I can say use custom section. When I do that, I can press pick, and I can pick this profile. Boom, and it will just use this profile. Now, once you've done that, if you go down here, you can set your pivot alignment. So if I set this down, it will use the pivot from this point. And you can also here, you can set it to like, here, you can set it to any type of uh, action. And just like that, you can even give it like an angle if you want to and offset it if you need to. Yeah, so I can just offset it however I want. But you can see how quickly it is. 
for you to then quickly just like create a profile and have it done. Now, even cooler is that this is an instance, meaning if I go in here and then and I add, for example, chamfer, you can see that it in real time updates. And that's why I love this kind of stuff and why while I'm learning Maya right now, I really miss this kind of stuff <laughs> because my Maya spline tools just uh, cannot match Blender or uh, can, whoa, no, <laughs> cannot match 3ds Max. Blender can also not match 3ds Max in the spline tools. Um, and that's also, as you can see, why I use them a lot when I'm modeling here. Uh, I use them for many small things, even for cylinders and everything, because the splines, um, I can go in very difficult angles. I can go to like a side angle like this, and I can then just very quickly add like a sweep, and it will just be a cylinder. And I don't need to like go in, make a cylinder, rotate the cylinder, move it into location, all that stuff. No, I'm just done. It is here. And uh, if I need to like edit it, I can just go ahead and like, oh, let me just edit the cylinder. Hell, I can even go in and I can even just like turn this into like a loop or whatever I want. I can do anything I want with it. And now it is a pretzel. For <laughs> it's not a pretzel, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's really cool. So we have done the sweep, the extrude. Now let's go for a uh, easy one. I'm just going to keep this one over here and there's another tool that i sometimes use which is the lattice lattice um la so we have these we have both of them the latte tool is uh, the tool that you saw me using i believe a bit before it basically allows you to rotate it now this is not the best shape for this so if we press flip normals it allows you to just make like a nice rotation but um in this case what i would need to do is i would need to um yeah, I would need to like move this piece back and uh, like rotate this. So of course I, you would need to make this shape based upon here. If I just go like corner, you would of course make this shape based upon how it looks. So just like that, see? So you can very easily, I, I'm not doing it correctly right now, but you can very easily like um, turn this into like a proper shape. Now that's the lat latte. You can also set like your degrees, so you can set like 90 degrees if you want, or or uh, sorry, 180 or 360. You can set your segments up and down. So it's a very handy tool. Um, actually, that is the one I use. I think the lat lattice tool. I'm not sure. Uh, it has to do with it, but I actually never used it. So let's press it. Uh. I'm not sure. I, I have no idea what this is. So um, I was just mistaken in the names. It is the latte. La latte. It sounds like a coffee, basically. Um, it's that tool. So that one will just very easily wrap around things. And that is basically it for the spline tools. As you as as you know, like you have rectangles and all of these things, they work exactly the same. So these are all just splines. So you can still use a sweep tool, and you can still either, even if I pick like an angle. It will still do its best to make it look correct. And you can select all of these settings for your angle. And uh, you can just make them all look very nice. So that is it for the spline modeling. It's very powerful. I would definitely look into it more if I was you. Um, and just make it part of your workflow if you're using 3ds Max full time. Uh, or not. Just um, make it part of your workflow in general. And let's continue in the next chapter which will be all about booleans. So let's go ahead and continue with that.